Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and film tonight's uh, layout and project update video. I'm gonna try to keep it to 10 minutes and uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about the projects, but I can show you that I'm setting up for a video on all my fantasy locomotives and fantasy cars. As you can see, there was no such thing as a West Virginian, but you got some V&O here. Got this VNO caboose I'm working on. AM uh, Alco RS3s that are 99% complete. And the coup de gras of these two Virginian and Ohio RS11s that I've been working on. Now, I hope you can see this in the in the shot, but 320 has been getting some some weathering. I've been using some Conrail locomotives as a uh, uh, little bit of a prototypical example of how to do the roof because I know on those Conrail engines those roofs on the cabs got uh, very rusty and then I do a little work to the trucks and the tanks the fuel tanks and I think they look pretty good a couple fantasy cars there a couple other things <clears throat> So this old school Tyco lifelike uh, switch tower has uh, been glued together. It's uh, complete as it's going to be. Maybe a little weathering on the concrete porch in front. I did not glue the roof on because I've installed a LED up there. And then it will uh, plug into, come on, it'll plug into uh, the same light Finally, the same light housing uh, bus system that the roundhouse plugs into. I'll be able to dim that light down so you'll be able to see it uh, without it like shining through the plastic. I think it'll work out okay. Added a few more trees here and there. Put the pump house back where it was supposed to be. Realized that I'm going to have to move some trees around because I got a signal that needs to come in right about in here. And uh, I'll take care of that now in the future sometime. Not too worried about it yet. Still trying to decide whether I'm going to, you know, cut the uh, the trees down there where it kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a mountain or something on each side. It just don't look quite like trees. But, uh, you know, I'll debate about it for a while. We'll see. Pretty happy with everything. <clears throat> Need to plant this mess of trees over here again. I just got them laying down. And uh, when I'm shooting from behind the camera here and a distance away, you can't tell that they're even laying down. So I've, I kind of cheat a little bit. Oh, let's see what else. What else? Went to Hobby Lobby the other day. Bought some more of those uh, wood mix edge trees on the left there with a little color. And I found these. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with those a little bit and see what happens and see if I can make something good happen with that. I've been gonna talk about this static grass. Uh, sorry about that. I'll start static grass um, apparatus. And uh, my wife bought me this just because she loves me a couple months ago. And I had bought this one to kind of practice with. Save your money. Don't buy that crap. It's just it's like a giant salt shaker. You put the uh, the grass in there, and you just literally shake it out. It It is not. All it did was just, the grass just fell sideways and laid on the ground, like, flat. But if you get the Static King, it runs off battery or power supply. Get this power supply. Trust me. You'll love it. All right. Let's go back over here. I have a, a guest with me tonight. He started in the video the other night. And... Uh, <laughs> Opie has decided he's taking he's taking over my chair again. Um, he likes it out here. He just comes out here and chills. Uh, none of the cats get up on the layout, and uh, it, it works out pretty good, I guess. So I cleaned up my project shelf there, and uh, all those are kits I need to put together. This is all kit bash stuff or cars that need to be repaired. And you see, I got a mess of frames right there. I need to clean the flashing off, and. Uh, paint them black put all the brake apparatus on there and then i got about 22 more 70 ton three bay coal cars to go on the layout 
I've got in a couple of decoders for a few motors. I started a caboose project, and this was going to be a Virginian and Ohio caboose. Oh, man. It's a Tyco. I got it for like nothing. And I just thought I would play with it, and I've decided it's not worth my time because the trucks got the little plugs in there, and I had to trim off all the area down here where the couplers went in and i was like you know i can get an atherin caboose that looks exactly the same for 10 bucks that i can you know deal with uh, i can deal with it a whole lot better and save me a whole lot of time so that's going to become a yard office ish type of arrangement and i'll show you where i'm gonna put it i'll weather it up make it look pretty dirty and then i'm gonna stick it back here and it'll sit somewhere like, yeah, like right here or something like that. Back out of the way, but <clears throat> back out of the way, but it'll, I think it'll look okay. And if not, yeah, I just, I'll put it someplace else. It don't matter. All right, let me show you what I was working on earlier. Take a little walk. Been trying to clean up. Been trying to do a lot of housekeeping. Let me back up a little bit. You can see my workbench. <clears throat> what is going on with my voice? You can see my workbench. And it is a hot mess. So I'm trying to reorganize, get everything all straightened out. I finally got me one of these uh, hobby cutting board things. This is like $30 at Hobby Lobby, but it was 40% off. So I think I got it for like 20 bucks. So I was pretty, pretty happy. No, I think it was over 40. Yeah, it had to be because I paid 24. But whatever, whatever. Yeah. If I was good at math, I wouldn't have been in the Army 27 years. So I got some new sprue cutters. And... And some saw blades, because I'm going to use these on some buildings. Um, like this other, this second old school Tyco switch tower. I'm going to cut the windows out and redo all the windows on this one. And I got these little blades because I couldn't find any of my hacksaw blades with a fine enough uh, uh, tooth count to not tear everything up. But I wanted to show you these sprue cutters. They cost me $5.00. They're pretty good. These are the Zuron. These things are like 15, 20 bucks. And I bent them already. Now I've had, well, I've had them for years and I've bent them already. But I got this pair. This is a generic pair. And I think I got these at Hobby Lobby too. And they're pretty good too. But when you look at the sprue cutter example, that's wrong. <laughs> you, want, you want the flat part up against your plastic you're cutting off so that the sprue pops out not so that you get a rough cut and have to sand more so i thought i'd show you that all right let's go in here so here in the next couple of weeks i'm gonna start concentrating on uh my friend greg's uh equipment all those gp9s are his with the exception of that that train master's mine but i gotta start working on his stuff so i get his stuff off my layout and get it back to him so he can have it on his layout because i've had it for way too long also got a I mess up stuff down there that I need to work on for him and get knocked out. As you can see, the train room back here, the, I call this area the workshop. This is a, a hot mess. I got spotlights. I got work lights. I got my little uh, rolling um, scenery, whatever that thing, workshop cart thing going on. Opie's been out here helping me. <laughs> yeah, I said your name, didn't I? Be ashamed. Put your, t Tuck your head down there and go back to sleep. And then, uh, let's see, we'll come in here. I haven't done a whole lot with the exception of clean up. And you can't even tell I cleaned up, but really I did. And I found some stuff, some damage on the floor that I have to fix. I'm going to have to take care of that here soon. But you see this here? It looks like a, like a one by four shelf. What this is going to be is essentially the portion of the layout that runs behind the layout that you're not going to see and it's going to have a three percent grade on it and it's going to come from the yard which will be in the area right over here it'll curve around cross over all the main lines and then just duck behind some buildings and go down grade it'll go down grade and go across to the other side where that black panel's at and then at some point there's going to be three or four industries like right in this area that will uh, 
uh, get switched out and it'll kind of add a little bit more operations to the uh, layout. It won't run straight over to it. It's going to curve and go underneath the layout about eight inches. And then you will have to work the industry with the train hidden underneath of here with it, with it curving backwards and then working this way here. And I did that because I don't want to be switching uh, the industries on a 3% grade. So the line that goes underneath is going to be a, uh, I'm going to call it the belt line. I haven't decided, you know, the whole name, but it's going to be something belt line. Maybe West Virginia belt line, maybe the V&O belt line, maybe the, the Midland belt line, something. It's going to be something. But it will run underneath the layout all the way down to where you see this box right here. Curve around and then come back down this wall. And it'll be about 18 to 20 inches wide. And this is going to be a pier scene. I'll have some, uh, it'd be like a, like a river terminal type of thing. I think it'll be kind of cool. I think I discussed it on... Uh, maybe one of my, my Facebook pages or something like that. I don't know. So you see this little camouflage thing here. I was playing around trying to determine how high I want to make that hill back here. I wanted to do 15 inches. The chicken wire I used was 24 inches. Therefore, I folded it in half and it's only about 12. And I think, I think I'm going to make it higher because I don't want to be able to see somebody on the other side working. And I had my wife out here and She's a little petite thing, five foot three, and I made her stand up on a step stool so she'd be about six foot, and I could see her head, I could see, you know, her eyes, and I was like, I, I don't want to see that. I want to be able to give the illusion that you're someplace else and not being able to see this yard and all the operations going on over here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and make everything about 20, 21 inches high. That way I can fold the uh, uh, chicken wire over a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom, and the other main line when it comes down because what I call the Virginia main line which it might not be the Virginia anymore I'm, I'm about to make some serious changes in my my railroads that I model but it will come down grade this white foam here I'm stretching it out to make it a one percent grade and it will come around behind all this here right next to the wall and be hidden with scenery it'll curve around about a foot or so away from the main line that's existing right there it'll all come together in a little funnel right here but be separated by uh you know like some you know like i'm not gonna say a foam mountain but like you know a couple fills and big hills so you won't be able to see one train when you're standing on this side and if you're standing on the other side there you won't be able to see the trains on this side but it will curve around and essentially go down this big hill through a tunnel and then this area over here will have a coal tipple on it because uh Coal operations are kind of my thing, but I'm trying to be more open-minded about everything else that goes along with railroading, all the different industries out there. And uh, some people really like those switching puzzles. And uh, I'm not that guy, but I was thinking about doing something that might be difficult to switch just so somebody who enjoys that can have that job when they come down. So I'm trying to find my paint so I can paint the road over here. I like to do a, uh, I have a gray paint that looks okay. And then I put rock over top of it. And then if it gets a little thin, it doesn't make any difference. Um, I still haven't done anything over here. I got everything marked off. I got some black paint. I need to glue this part down and, and finish working on this uh, workshop here. And if I really applied myself, I'd probably be done in a couple minutes. Well, half an hour, maybe an hour. But I've been really lazy lately. I haven't been, haven't been sick. I just haven't wanted to do anything. I, just, I guess I'm getting burned out. So there's so much to do out here that I'm always doing something and you know my projects are kind of spread out everywhere and I'm always working on something and I literally I'm waiting on stuff to dry paint to dry glue to dry decals to dry and doing something else and going back and forth between two or three projects at a time while I paint decal and build uh build buildings and, and such so I need to go ahead and just concentrate on on finishing up this yard scene and getting this part here mocked up with this big hill and everything so i can start you know throwing some plaster on there and making a little progress on the other side over there but i already have the one by threes to make this section that'll be between the window and the existing layout right there so i could do this curve and it's going to have a 
three tracks that come around. Um, it's going to be a 48 inch radius curve on the outside and 46 and then 44. So it's going to be pretty, pretty wide and pretty sweeping. And then I'm going to try to keep the mainline tracks closer to the wall or closer to where this opening will be at. And then there's going to be another line of the belt line with an industrial, uh, more of an industrial aspect of it coming down. A lot of switching in front of the main line. That way there your main line trains aren't, you know, in the way of, you know, switching out this uh, industrial track. So I got a lot, I got a lot planned. It's just, it's hard to imagine. I know when me talking about it, I can see it in my head. I, I know I'm probably not doing that great of a job of conveying my ideas and my thoughts so that you can, you know, figure it all out. But I got a lot to do. There's a lot of videos to make. There's a lot of future uh, content. You know, I, I don't, I, I never have, uh, I'm never lacking content. And uh, so just like, subscribe, share a video, leave a comment. I love the comments. Greatly appreciate everybody's comments so far. And uh, come back tomorrow or here in a couple days and see what I do next. Hey, go watch another video. I need to get them hours up. Thank you very much.